this is, of course, Kadeem Khan, the director of uh, Chaos Disorder. And it's really a great pleasure to have her here. Um, I'm going to ask a few questions, and then I'm going to open it up for discussion, because I think uh, it's very rare to have a young director with us. Um, my, I want to start where Omar started uh, with a question and answer uh, earlier this evening uh, from around the Pink House with Khalil Jorge, and that is, where did the idea for the film come from? Um, the idea of the film started, um, I was working as an uh, assistant director on another film with the uh, director Yusri Nasrallah, and we were working uh, in a refugee camp in Lebanon. And uh, it was interesting for me there because I discovered that there is a, like a Coca-Cola dealer in a, in a place who, who gets coke, the Coke inside and uh, somehow yeah, he uh, abuses this. And then um, I started relating it to slum areas in a lot of countries in the region, Cairo in, Cairo, in Syria, and in a lot of places, and then it developed. So when you had, you had the, the idea first when? What year? Uh, the, the beginning of the The very beginning. I think it was 2004. 2004. Oh, I think so. And so were you doing sort of like just sort of cursory research looking around or as you were going to these sort of uh, low income or poor neighborhoods or these enclosed neighborhoods, that's how the idea kind of developed? Um, I mean, it, it came through it came through my own experiences. It developed through my own experiences. But it's not like I was researching it. No, <laughs> it was it was uh, it was there from from my own personal experiences. But uh, the idea itself developed too much. It, in the beginning, it was something else, and then after all those years, it ended up. So when we <laughs> talked before, you said that it had taken six years to make yeah. the film. Yeah. yeah. But can, can you talk about that? Why did, do films usually take six years? Or was this have to do with funding? Or? No, it, it took six years starting from the treatment itself. Uh, in the beginning, I had a treatment. Uh, and I um, applied for the Lucarno Film Festival, Open Doors. And then I took a grant to develop it into uh, um, a script. And then I went through a few workshops. and. Uh, and it took actually pr production, it took two and a half years, uh, the actual production. Right. Uh, fundraising took around also two years or something like that. Is that usually how, now, I've read interviews with you before and you've talked about the difference the way in, the, in Egypt people see independent cinema as opposed to art house cinema. And I was sort of curious, like, how, where do you characterize your film and is this the way, if, we would call this independent, but is that the way independent films are made in Egypt through getting grants? Uh, that's a very difficult question because <laughs> the 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 definition of independent uh, cinema in I could I could speak about Egypt. Yes, I can speak in general. Is something uh, very vague, and and for me, I really don't care. <laughs> I really care that I do the film in whichever way. I think uh, defining it or putting it in, in certain categories is not my job somehow. Okay, yeah. okay, that's, that's <laughs> fine. I'm really interested in the music that you use for the film yeah. because you use this wonderful piano music, other parts use gamelan. Exactly. Um, so you were making it, sort of giving it more of an international flavor or yeah, exactly. <laughs> I didn't want the music. Um, um, actually, I had this uh, discussion with a lot of people because the music is very far from the from the culture itself. And for me, it, I, I insisted that it it, it, it would be more uh, closer to the story or to the drama than to the culture because I think my film is a bit not related only to Egypt. I think it's related to any such community. Well, that's anywhere. what I was curious about. I think for all of us seeing the film, you know, we're really grounded in Egypt, or what we think of is your version of this district, uh, you know, in Cairo, near a garbage dump. Yeah. But you you don't really see it like that. No, uh, and actually, I, I think from the response uh, I get from all around the world that uh, a lot of people uh, relate to the film easily. Uh, and I think it's because uh, it's a, it's a, a world of its own, with its own rules, its own 
uh, everything, uh, own system, own even morals, uh, uh, relationships, everything. So it has its own so yeah, I found it really interesting, um, uh, Nadine Khan, of course, is the daughter of Mohammed Khan, who, whose film Factory Girl was also premiered at Safar on Friday night. And you know, your father was talking about you know, um, realism. And this, this film has a realist look to it, but it's something that you, you, you created, you've yeah. gone out to make. Yeah. And I thought that was sort of, can you talk about uh, the physical plan? You were talking about this afternoon in the forum, yeah. like where you were filming, how you sort of, you didn't find this village or this district, you yeah. created it. Can yeah. you talk more yeah. about that? Um, I, um, the film, I'm uh, sorry. <laughs> The whole idea of the film uh, started that I, I push reality to a certain extreme. Uh, and I think I worked on every detail of the film in the same way. Uh, starting from from the characters even are pushed to extremes, the dialogue, the, the, I think the script the same way. Some people have debate about this. <laughs> But uh, also, I, I wanted to build, uh, I wanted to find a place first before, because production reasons, I wanted to find a place with a very unique architecture. And I did find a place in Cairo, but I couldn't get permits to, to film there. Uh, so I decided I'll build it, and it would be also easier for me to work with all, the, all those extras in a, in a closed environment. Uh, Production-wise, it would be much easier. So uh, I rented a, a land, a piece of land, and we built the sets there, and we worked there. Oh, okay, and, and this idea that you want to keep everybody sort of together, yeah. because you wanted to engender that community feeling, because mm -hmm. you really do feel that this is a community that is yeah. uh, under stress, but a community that's very curious about each other, and they want to know everything about each other. Yeah. Um, also, part of what helped to get this feeling is that um, I, I, I shot in, uh, in order, I filmed in order, okay. and I insisted that uh, the same extras come every day, the same people, so after a while they started getting uh, um, uh, they know the, they started getting living in that place actually, and really putting their own input. I even had people coming and telling me what they think of what of the scenes, and yeah, it was more of a of a place that everyone, even the dogs. I I, <laughs> I got I got the I got them as puppies in the beginning, and actually there is I mean, in a few shots there's a difference that they do. <laughs> Yeah, so I, I think I, I insisted on creating this world and it, and it shows in the, in the film. No, it's, it's, it's one of my favorite films. I think it's a wonderful film. Thank you. We were talking this afternoon at the forum about censorship. Yeah. Could you tell, I, I don't know how many people were at the forum this afternoon, could you talk about what happened with censorship to the film in terms of uh, getting permission to shoot it? Um, in 2010, uh, I was going to produce uh, the film with a, with a, a producer in, uh, in Egypt, and uh, then the censorship refused the script, and we never got an official reason why. Uh, and then 2011 was the revolution, and uh, right after the 18 days, I took the script straight to the censorship, and I got the approval, and I've done it. But the the, the official reason why we never right we never got the official we reason never knew why. My 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 point of view is probably in 2011 was supposed to be the presidential elections, and it wasn't only my film. There were another film that was also refused, and I think they just wanted like light films to be to be done at that time more than serious films or talking about serious issues. But one of the things you said this afternoon, and I, wa I wanted to ask you about it then, was that you said you took it into um, you know, the script again like like 10 days after the January 5th, uh, 25th revolution. I don't, or like, I don't or remember or exactly. Something like straight that. After, yeah. Straight after. Yeah. And then you also said after that, you said that if you would take the script in now, you didn't think that you would get permission. Yeah. And I was sort of curious about that. Why is it harder now to get permission? Actually, right now, there, there are a few films that are having a few problems with, with, with the censorship, even with the titles of the films. And I think the censorship is back as it is. I, I think it's worse, but I don't have a personal experience to say that from what I'm Seeing what's happening, yes, they're they're really 
tightening it up a bit. Oh, that's, that's, that's bad news for all of us. Yeah. Um, I'm also sort of curious is that there was something that your father said in his Q&A on Friday night that he, he, he was talking about the status of women mm -hmm. and the status of women that one of the reasons why he makes the films that he makes is because he's, he's always examining the status of women as a lower status. Women have no power in society. And we were just sort of chatting afterwards and you said to me, well, I don't agree with that. So I, I wanted to ask you why you don't agree with your father on that point. <laughs> because I think that, you know, now the discussion about women in the Middle East uh, being downtrodden, all, the whole thing is really what I, we're reading a lot of stereotypes I, about. I think somehow, yeah, I, I, I disagree of, of talking about women in general and, and putting them in a, in, in a, how do you say it? Um, uh, in a certain place, whatever it is, <laughs> or talking about men and putting them in a certain place, or talking about anything and <laughs> putting it. I, I just don't think I like judging things. I think uh, um, uh, there are difficulties all the time uh, around us yeah. in, in every aspect. And, uh, and somehow I'm a woman and I did my film. Of course it wasn't easy and everything, but I find also other fellow filmmakers having the same problems. So well, that was another a, thing that you said, that she said in conversation, sort of yeah. in passing, that someone asked her, is it difficult to be a woman director in Egypt? And you had said, well, you think it's difficult for men and for women. Yeah, I think, so I was just I think doing good, good films in Egypt uh, isn't, isn't that easy. <laughs> yeah, or doing, nothing, I can't say good films is the wrong word, but out of the mainstream uh, films is not easy at all, production-wise, distribution-wise. And I think it's a struggle for all filmmakers. For yeah. all filmmakers. Yeah. That's why it's so special that you're here tonight, why you've seen this film. Let's open up uh, questions to the audience. Anyone? I'd be interested to know if the film was distributed in Egypt and what sort of reaction you got from the public. Yeah, it was distributed in Egypt, but uh, unfortunately I was uh, in cinemas right before the 30th of June where, where the whole country was, yeah, wasn't thinking about cinema at all. <laughs> so uh, I, I, I can't really say the reaction of public, but the few times I went to the theater, uh, I actually found that people were, were responding to the film. But I can't really say it wasn't any uh, a real experience. Uh, I just wanted to follow on from something you started talking about. How the hell did? What was your strategy with directing all those? Like directing the crowd? I haven't seen a crowd oh, yeah. in a film. I don't know a lot of crowds. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. It's called Karabumarak. So. <laughs> Um, um, I think I, I worked as an assistant director for 15 years and I worked with a lot of crowds uh, and I love working with crowds so I decided to do a film for the crowds and I think I did it. And 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 also, uh, also I had very, very good uh, directing team, mm -hmm. really, really, they were very good and I shot in four weeks this film, which is also, yeah, I think my team was amazing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Bro. Hi, Nadine. Congratulations on your first feature. You. Um, I understand that you're trying to portray a dystopian society. Um, what I found uh, interesting was that the only big man is caught in an embarrassing situation and the youth are completely involved in either pay playing games or, or winning the girl. And, and, the, and the children seem to be in an even worse situation. Uh, I was wondering whether at the back of your mind um, you just wanted to tell a story which was in, in your mind for a very long time as I've just come to know or did you also kind of draw on society that you saw in and around yourself in Egypt or wherever you were? I think it's both. <laughs> I think, I think, um, uh, I think this, the whole society, nobody does anything. Nobody actually works. Nothing is really happening. Uh, and, and it's like a cycle that they're living in. 
Uh, but actually inside the cycle there is a kind of a life with its own, as I said before, I keep on saying it, I'm sorry, with its own rules and morals and, and feelings and everything. And, and what I'm trying to say is that it exists or, 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 or I'm just looking at it. Uh, and, I think, and I think we're all in the same situation, more or less. Can I ask you the, the function, can you talk about the function of the loudspeaker? I oh, yeah. <laughs> like, what does a loudspeaker represent? I mean, I have my own yeah. ideas, but. Actually, it's, it's like, a, it's the media of the place. Part of creating this world was creating the media, and uh, that was their media. <laughs> That's it. I had read that um, Nadine had uh, part of that idea for the loudspeaker came from Nash. Yeah. And I was, I was sort of, you know, again, it shows like how, you know, people have a tendency to think that like Arab culture, Middle Eastern culture is somewhere over there, but we're all this product of global culture, you know, like yeah. our, our pop culture is maybe not all the time similar, but similar. There's a lot of similarities, of course, but also the, the idea of the, of the announcer or the radio or the mic or whatever it is <laughs> does exist in Egypt, but in, in, in certain very small villages, and, but it does exist, but even Egyptians don't know. I mean, sometimes people come and talk to me and they say, but that we don't have that, but we actually do. <laughs> it does exist. So interesting. <laughs> there are some other questions back there, please. Hi, um, amazing film. Uh, I, ju I was just thinking of, um, as an Egyptian, of course, I'm just, it's totally in Egypt for me. Um, and as you said, it's a closed space, but I think maybe you could, um, I just want to know your, your opinion on how important or how influential do you think these closed, closed spaces are in society because they are closed and sometimes when you visit them you feel like nothing is happening or you're, you're outside of the society but actually after January we, I think we discovered that they exist and they actually we can't solve the entire situation if we don't you know, open them and kind of deal with them. But I want to know your own take on it, on the issue. I think they discovered that we exist. <laughs> I think so. I think that if you, if you look at the majority of, of, uh, of, of the Middle East, is, is, is this society. I think we are the minority, or whoever we are also, because it's very tricky. But uh, um, uh, that's the whole point of the film, is not to, to, to say, uh, <laughs> distinguish. Distinguish that we between uh, uh, different worlds. It's in the end the whole idea is that it's this world with its own thing that is happening, uh, and I think somehow we all live in that. Our economic situation is somehow the same, but it's just uh, on a spotlight. So. I know that Ruba has a question down here. Congratulations on your film. Um, I have two questions, if that's OK. Yeah, sure. OK. Um, the first one is, uh, I, I consider that there's some preconceptions on the West about um, the Middle East, about e Egypt. Um, fundamentally, I, I think that a lot of Western good thinking are quite ethnocentric or eurocentric way that um, the Arab world is uh, like um, disordered and chaotic, and it could also reproduce um, ideas about um, democratic disorder and etc. So, and I think it's a problem also with with directors of the south of Europe. I was thinking, for instance, about Fellini, about Berlanga in Spain how they have been criticized for representing those countries as really disordered, chaotic, and without any structure. So I was wondering, um, how do you relate to those themes? Do you, do you think you can somehow reproduce this, this idea that the West has, has about the Arab world or 
for Egypt, or yeah, how do you deal with them? Because um, it's quite problematic, I think. Yeah, uh, to be honest, I really don't think about it. I really don't think about um, uh, 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 the point of view of, uh, of even the, uh, the Middle East or the West or the about about what I'm doing. Actually, I, I just do what I do and, and wait to see how the people respond to it. So I really don't think about it, to be honest. <laughs> That's perfectly fine, as long as the film is awesome. Um, <laughs> yeah, and I was also wondering um, more broadly about um, the influence of your film directors or maybe styles that you were considering with making it. You were saying previously that you were um, doing realism, but beyond realism, which somehow reminds me of Fellini again. But I'm, I'm, not, I'm not like an expert on Arab cinema, hopefully. So maybe you could. Illustrate that a little bit. I'm sorry, I didn't get the, the question exactly. Could you say? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, what are your influences, your directors? Like, what was like your type of reference, film-wise, um, when making that? For this film, uh, as was mentioned before, was what Mash really influenced me a lot for this film. Uh, this is something I could say, but uh, also, also. Uh, a lot of a lot of different influences and a lot of different details, but what's clear, I could say, is in Mash. Yeah. And how about um, generally? Like, do you take it? Like, have you been inspired by your, I mean, your father or other? What directors have inspired you? Uh, a lot. <laughs> a lot. And and yeah. probably uh, Arab and foreign. Yeah, around, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Can you name a good, few? Good, good cinema is good cinema. <laughs> so <laughs> you, so you, you get influenced, you, you love it. So it's different. Yeah. Now, I know that you did you, that you were an assistant director for DreamWorks, too, for Transformers. Yeah. yeah. Did, was, that really, was that really different working for them as yeah, opposed to working? Yeah, of course. Working, yeah. <laughs> definitely, definitely different. That, that, that's a totally different budget. Totally different. <laughs> Uh, I, I worked on part of it. Yeah, the, 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 the part that was filmed, filmed in, in Egypt, Egypt. Yeah, I was working as a first assistant, and um, uh, of course, I was I was just you know, for me, I called it the the director's uh, heaven, director's paradise, <laughs> because <laughs> it's just so everything different. is just there, and you just <laughs> you, you know cameras anywhere he wants to shoot. For me, it was just uh, amazing. And of course, it's a totally different system. I also worked with, uh, in uh, in European on uh, European uh, productions, and also it's a different system. So I think it's. Uh, and the Egyptian production is also a different system, so <laughs> yeah. But of course, it was uh, it was amazing. <laughs> there was um, my question is literally. I'm just curious because this is your first uh, feature film. Yeah. What's next? <laughs> if you can tell us. No, I'm, uh, I'm still um, at the beginning of writing a script, so there's nothing to say really right at that point. But I'm still in the beginning, so hopefully soon. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. No, look, we look forward. Yeah. Thank we you. really look forward. Thank you. Any other questions? Yes. Uh, hi. Uh, I was one of the lucky ones to see your father's movie last night, uh, Factory Girl. And I saw yours, and I'm very lucky too. <laughs> but uh, your father is a big name. But I understand that this is your first movie. Yes. So who makes a good quality movie? Is it big names? Because actually yesterday's movie or today's movie, they are not big names starred in the film. Start. Oh. Yeah. So what makes a good movie, good quality movie? Uh, the director or the storyline or big names? Okay. The stars. Uh oh. Yeah. <laughs> and also, I'd like to ask you, please. The movie, the I think. <laughs> I don't know because it's good quality movie. Although it's your first one, and uh, you're Thank not. You. Yeah, yeah. This is really good. And also, is it your brother who composed this the music? music? Yes. Okay. Yeah. yeah. He's an artist. Okay. Thank yeah. you. Thank you. When you were growing up. Did you know that you wanted to be a director, that you wanted to make films? No. Actually, I wanted to, to, uh, to be a painter. <laughs> so, so what happened? 
I, I just couldn't enter art, uh, art university, and then I felt like I have to be in the art scene. I can't do anything else. So I said I'll try to film. And then when I when I started working as an AD while I was studying, I just felt like I found myself here. <laughs> this is where I am. And did your did your father give you any tips, or do you when, when there's something like if you're bothered by the sensors or something, do you talk to him? Oh, of course. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. So did he give you any sort of internal, you know? Yeah, tip he, for he the... just tells me to calm down. <laughs> calm down. <laughs> yeah, of course. Yeah. Oh, that's great. Did he thank you so much? Thank you. For... Sorry, I had one oh yeah, I'm sorry. If you don't mind. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, Nadine, I was wondering. Uh, you said that you took your time writing the story. Did you have uh, many possible endings in mind? Because um, I just wanted to share that I was a bit disconcerted with the ending, especially because uh, Manal was a, is a feisty character in the film. And in the end, and she stands up to her father, uh, but in the end, she, she, you know, I see her reduced, uh, just, just happy with the arrangement and the, and the situation that she is in, and totally accepting it. Uh, so did you have any other possible endings in mind? No, no. But I understand your concern because also I had a lot of discussions about the ending. But for me, it's, uh, I don't see it that way. Manel is part of this society and they're all the same. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if she marries Munir or marries Zek. It doesn't matter if the coach died or not. It doesn't matter who died in the beginning. It's, it's, it's just everything is by coincidence and everything is just happening as it goes. It's not that they choose. There is there is no choice in the whole thing. So, so she's part of this society. I, I didn't look at her as a girl or a boy, as, um, as we talked. By that, you mean that there are references from the Egyptian society you live in, or it's the in you're talking purely about the world that you have created on screen? I'm, I'm talking about the world I created on uh -huh. the screen. Yeah. OK. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you.